Okay, hello, hello, happy Wednesday. Sorry for all the tech issues. I hope we got it worked out. Um, I'm still approving people to get in, but we will go ahead and get started because it's 914. And y'all know I don't like to keep you forever. I just don't do it. Um, so tonight I wanted, so I wanna start out with like some announcements. So we have today is what, the 23rd. So you have tonight, and tomorrow, which I know tomorrow is Christmas Eve. Some people do things on Christmas Eve, some people don't. Um, but I want you to not think, oh, well, people are celebrating, they're, they're doing their holiday things right now, they're with family, they're not on their phone, because I'm telling you, even when most people are with their family, they are on their phones, okay? So let's not make those excuses tonight and tomorrow. I, on Christmas, most people will unplug. But um, really, I want you all to take advantage and keep running. December is not over. 2020 is not over. So I want you to really, the thing is, with these credits, the $25 bomb accounts, I don't know why I always call them that. They used to call them that. But um, yeah, exactly. That's where I was going with that, Sue. So you need to blow it up, not spam your timeline. Well, don't take it as that, but you need to blow this up and take advantage because, okay, even if the people don't have the money right now, even if your potential, they're saying no right now, they can make their accounts and they have until January 7th to use those credits. That's a long time. People might get Christmas money. People might get, I don't know, these stimulus checks might go through. Like we, you've all seen how that was the last time everybody got stimulus checks like it blew up you never know what can happen in the next couple of weeks so make sure that you're getting people in the system and getting their free accounts so i shared with the team yesterday i had seen um someone else do it it was not my idea <laughs> um but and paul said they're dropping something amazing on the seventh exactly so i used my stimulus stimulus to start see i mean stimulus beat tax season this year honestly like it was insane so keep that in mind <laughs> um but the thing is you can word it to where it's not you don't have to use the same wording every time you don't have, like pe maybe people heard you talk about the 25 in credits or maybe they've seen the sales and stuff and they're just not ready make this as it's giving season because it is it's giving season and you have $25 Thrive gift cards to give out. What? Does that not sound better? Does that not sound different? I'm going to give you a $25 Thrive credit, um, what's it called? Gift card for Christmas. So that's something that I've been running with. Um, it just kind of tweaks the wording a little bit. It stands out from other people. Um, Love that. That's so good. Oh, okay. I thought you all were asking a question, but I mean, it just kind of like, and, and it, it is, it's giving season. It's us giving to them. It's you telling them right now, I'm not trying to sell you on anything, but right now I can give you a $25 gift card to my online store. You don't have to use it right now. You have until January 7th. It's all good. Use your Christmas money later. Use your next paycheck after Christmas. You know, money's tight right now. I get it. Um, so I really want you all to run with that. Make a post. I had made a post yesterday. Let me pull it up. Um, and I got messages off of it, but it was something to that effect. Cause I don't usually post like that. Like if you see how I post, I don't usually do that. Um, but I put, I'm giving out $25 Thrive gift cards this week. That will be good until January 7th. Who wants one? And it just kind of gets new people in your inbox. It gets your, you know, your other, your, their, your customers, you, they can sign their husbands up. You know, we don't preach making duplicate account, duplicate accounts I can't talk because you can't obviously but you know like their husband their sister their mom their whatever um so really use that to your advantage um like I said blow this up not in a spammy way but make sure you're talking about this on your stores Pete I promise you people are on their phones right now I promise you not everyone is unplugging I promise you people still have they're still thinking like this week alone people are wore out They've wrapped all the presents there. And I don't know how many posts I've seen today that it's like, um, and sharing memes. And it's like praying for all the, the moms who still have to cook their house is a disaster and they don't have all the presents wrapped. And it may be you talk about that. You need to be relatable. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I know we're talking about branding tonight too. That's your brand. 
are you a busy mom? Do you have to get things that people need to know that you're just like them? You're not sitting on some pedestal somewhere. You didn't join a Thrive business and your life is perfect and you have all the energy and you got all the things done. Because let me tell you, I take my capsules every morning too, but guess what? My life is still in shambles. Hello, look at tech issues tonight. It's fine. We have to roll with the punches. So I want you all to keep that in mind. And then another thing, like I don't want you all to, I'm switching gears here. I don't want you all to overcomplicate branding either. Branding isn't just, oh, you need a pretty color palette and pretty fonts and everything the same on your page. And of course we want it to be aesthetically like pleasing, but that's not what your brand is about. Your brand is you. And um, we talked about this on a training the other day. So if you were on it, then it might be repetitive to you, but it's fine. Um, but your brand is whatever you want it to be. Your brand is who you are. You can't look at M and then brand yourself off of M. You can't look at my page and then brand yourself off of what my page looks like. You can't copy someone else's brand because that's you can't hold that standard. That's not who you are. You can't be a perfect Pinterest mom if you're really, your life is in shambles 24 seven. You can't hold that standard to yourself. That's why so many people get burnt out. That's why the comparison trap is a real problem because we constantly want to be someone else. We constantly want to do things like someone else. I've been watching all these moms bake all these things this weekend. I can't even make brownies like, but guess what? I'm not even going to attempt. I'm just going to be fine. My kids love me for who I am. It just is what it is. Um, but I just wanted to remind you, make sure you're taking advantage of those 25 account, um, credit accounts so far going to, into branding. Make sure that you're still running this out. You're still getting people in the system. You're still taking advantage. Um, I know we don't do like the, and you may, maybe not, um, but we don't do, we don't push like the free accounts and stuff. But right now that is the name of the game, I guess. You want to get people's orders in, of course. But if they can't order right the second, that's fine. Get them their credits. It's giving season. Give them that. Listen, we had a birthday party today with no cake for my daughter because it's all good. You're still a good mama and you know that. Um, so branding. I didn't want to come. So I've taken branding courses and stuff, but I didn't want to come on here and talk about this worksheet that I filled out and how I did this and the colors that I picked because in reality when we did a training the other day it really hit me when I did my branding course it was like my colors and I shared this the other night too my colors were pink and blue y'all I don't even like pink I'm not a pink person why did I pick my branding as pink because I seen someone else's branding was pink and I was like oh well that's pretty so let me just run with that never even been a pink person. It's never been my favorite color, but I just did it because I thought it looked good. And I didn't know the importance of branding back then. I didn't know. I thought it was color palettes and presets and having a perfect feed. And I don't know that it's, that's not what it is. Now I do suggest coming up with your, your colors and what, I, what we talk about and what we base ours on is where do you take your mo the most of your pictures at? Is it in your house? So what are the colors that are in your house? You don't want to, maybe your background is, you have a hot pink couch, but then you pick your branding colors as um, red and blue, but then all the pictures you post is on this pink couch. That's not gonna look right, if that makes sense. I want you to, um, what if you sign people up for the $25 credit and they never use it and they expire? Free accounts don't build business. So I know people who don't make accounts until they're ready to order. That's true. Um, if they just don't use them and they do expire, then that they just lost out, that's on them. Now, I, I, that is how I run my business. I don't make people accounts until they're ready to order. But with the credit thing, I do help people with that. Because the thing is, if they, don't, if they don't make an account and then they do come up and want to order in a week, they just missed out on that $25 in credits. So um, the way that I take things, and I know me and M and everyone was talking about this the other day, is we don't push the free accounts just to get people in the system. But we take it as a, like a, a build your list, build your potentials list, um, talk about talk to as many people as you can, find out who's interested, follow up with your people, all the things. 
Um, that's what we mean by that. But the name of the game right now is to get people in the system so they have those credits. And that's just, I mean, that's personal preference. If you don't want to help people do that, that's totally on you. I don't make people accounts until they order either. But right now I would because those credits expire in t after tomorrow. So what do you mean by pick your colors? So I'll show you something in just a minute. Um, let me go ahead and pull it up. Um, let me see. Where is it at? My branding stuff. And this is just an example. This is what I did a long time ago. So when you go to someone for like branding and or if you do it yourself, branding, basically, there's two aspects of it. There's like the um, who you are as a person, why you do what you do, what you do. Like when I go to your page, what do I see? Are you I share this all the time, too, but I used to be obsessed with Batman. Everybody that knew me knew that. So they would tag me in like a bunch of Batman stuff. Like if, you know, if you, you're driving down the road and you see a car that's black and yellow and you think of Batman, oh, you think of me, if that makes sense. That's branding yourself. Brand, branding is essentially what people say about you when you're not in the room, if that makes sense. What do people think of when they think of you? Starbucks, Target, like that's part of your brand. It can be little things like that. Are you a mom? That's part of your brand. But then there's another part of your brand that kind of ties things in. Like, like I said, if people see a color and they think of you. So um, I have a friend that has a credit business. Um, she has her own credit business, not like the network marketing one or nothing like that. But her colors are like blue and pink. Like that's her thing. So when I see something that comes up that's blue and pink, I'm like, oh, well, that just reminded me of Melissa. Maybe I need to hit her up. It just kind of makes, it gives people a way to remember you if that makes sense. Like if you see, I used to have red hair, which is irrelevant now, but like if someone's seen red hair or something like that, they're like, oh, well, I forgot about Krista. Maybe I need to order from her or something like that. You know, anything that can make people think of you is what I mean. Sorry, there was something. So this, this was my branding board back in like, I guess 2016 to 2017, something like that. But what I did was I went on Pinterest, color psychology and how, well, that's good to know. Um, so when I, what we did back then was we went to Pinterest and so when you think of yourself or I kind of base mine off of the color palette that's in my house. So like my couch and the stuff around my house is like till and tans and like, you know, just nude colors. So that's kind of what I go with because nothing's bright and jumping out at you. Um, so if you go to my page, that's what it kind of is. My presets, like, a, I think it's called hot chai spice at the moment. Like, you get the vibes when you think of that, like the tans and stuff like that. Um, back then, like I said, I went to Pinterest and it was just like, you can go to Pinterest and search, um, I think, branding boards or something like that. And it brings different stuff up. So what I did was I picked just a few pictures that I liked back then and she just kind of pulled it together. And I'll show y'all. Um, I don't know if y'all can see that. Can y'all see that? But back then, like I said, I like the pink and the blue. I don't know what I, I don't know what I was doing back then, but she tied it together. That's how you tie it all together. You pick the colors that you like, or you can look at your page and kind of see what your vibe is, if that makes sense. So like I said, maybe you have bright red hair. Maybe you have bright blue hair. So maybe that's some colors that you can integrate into your brand so that when people see things, they think of you or when they go to your page, it's very cohesive. Now, when I say aesthetically pleasing and cohesive, let me reiterate that you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have the perfect social media and it doesn't have to be completely flawless. Like that's not realistic. I mean, if you're a perfectionist, go for it. Um, I know like when you go to M's page or you go to, um, I don't know, Brittany's page, like everything is very clean, very pretty, great pictures, presets, stuff like that. Now that is the goal. But like I said, you don't have to be hard on yourself or, and make yourself perfect and you're not. Yes, and I had colored my hair, they associated with me with mermaid and unicorn. Exactly. So that's the thing. So if you think of, maybe you've seen her hair and you think of a mermaid. So the next time you are watching The Little Mermaid, you think, oh, well, I should message Eric. I forgot about her. It's just oh, these little quirks that make people think of you. So um, another thing, so like I said, you can go to Pinterest and kind of, I don't want you to spend a thousand hours on this. I don't want you to overcomplicate it or anything like that. Country rustic. See some people, sunflowers, butterflies, most of you all should know what you like. You should know what you like. And like I said, you can base it off of where you take majority of your picture. So if my house was like, you know, rose gold or something, maybe I'd go with something like that. Um, but just think of, 
what your vibe is, what your reality is, what's around you, what's in the background of your pictures. Um, you know, is it more modern? Is it more antique? Is it, those are just things that you can think of when it comes to your brand. So like I said, that's like the visual part of your brand. Um, and then you have the who you are. And then the way that you tie it together is what you're about. So it's like different aspects of who you are and your brand. And it's just a technical way of saying it, like your branding. I don't know. It just sounds good, right? And then you just put that on social media. Um, so it's all basically your five things. You tie that in with everything else. Now I want to dye my hair. <laughs> um, my needs dyed. Can y'all see the, those roots? I look like I have ombre hair now. It's fine. Um, but so I don't, I didn't really want to talk about the color, the aesthetic part of your brand. I want to assure you all that you're already branding yourself. You've already branded yourself. I think a lot of times we see these trainings, like I know, I knew that I put, if I put on there that we were going to talk branding and social media and everything else, everybody was like, oh my gosh, yes, I'm going to be on there. Because y'all thought I was going to give you a secret sauce. Y'all thought I was going to give you some, a checklist that you were going to do and you were going to grow 5,000 followers overnight because your branding was on point, right? That's what we do. Because it comes down to comparing ourselves to other people too. Maybe you sit, but, and the thing is, when you see M's page, she's been doing this for a while. She's been branding herself for a while. This is not an overnight thing for her. She's been doing this. She's tried all the presets. Like I seen when she first started with Lavelle. I seen when she was with another company. Like even I had branded myself with black, green, and bling in my last company. But the thing is, I want you all to know that branding yourself and who you are is what's important because if you brand yourself and you're blowing your page up as Thrive or the Lavelle girl or whatever, and I'm not saying anybody's leaving the company. I'm not saying don't take it as this, but you know, I thought that I was a lifer in my last company. And so I branded myself that way. And then when I left, I was like, well, who I, who am I? That's what people knew me as. You have to brand yourself as who you are. That's why we don't blow up thrive on our page. That's why we don't spam our timelines with all of that. That's why I don't make myself known as the thrive girl. I mean, I want people to know that. I want, to pe want people to know that's what they come to me for, obviously. But that's not who I am. That's just something that's in my life. Just like I'm not just a mom. That's not the only thing that I am. That was a reason that I started this business. I needed something for myself. So I don't want people to know that I'm just a mom. That's not, not what I want people to know me as. People will buy you, not your company. Exactly. So that's what I want you all to think about. How have you already branded yourself? I want you to truly think about that tonight. What do people think of when they think of you? Do people tag you in random stuff? Like, do they see a commercial or like an ad for Target and do they tag you in it? Do they know that you wanted a new vacuum cleaner? Do they know that you want, I don't know. Do they think of you when they think of American Eagle? Like, what is your brand? What are you putting out there? What do people know about you? Do people know anything about you? Or do you just blow up Thrive on your timeline? And you don't have to answer this to me, but you have to be real with yourself. Because the thing is, you know, M has shared her IVF journey. She shared her um, pregnancy loss. She shared all these things. And then look at her engagement. Look at the outreach or the outpour of everything from everyone on her page now that she's announced her pregnancy. It's because she branded herself. She shows up on social, social media and shares her life. She, I'm sure she didn't share like all of the trials and everything else. Of course, you have to keep a part of your life private. But she shared her journey so that when she, so when she announced her pregnancy, people came out of the woodworks to congratulate her. They've been following along, even if she didn't even know it. They might not have followed and interacted and did all the things on her stories or whatever, but they followed her. They kept up with her. She branded herself with that. So I hope that makes sense to y'all. But once you have it made, how do you use the board? Posting it? No, you don't post it. It's kind of just something for you. Um, I mean, if you wanted to post it and was like, oh my gosh, this is my new branding board. I love it. So when people see it, they think of you. I don't know. But it's just kind of something for you, um, for you to have, for you to remember that vibe when you're posting. So, you know, if you went on there and 
you were trying to figure out what to post or you were taking pictures or whatever, you can kind of think of, you know, does this look like my brand? Does this look like me? Star Wars and Halloween. If that's you, then that's you. I mean, the thing is nobody else is you. You don't have to feel ashamed or feel wrong for being who you are or um, sharing what you share. Some people get on Facebook and stuff and talk politics all the time. I don't just because I'm not into politics, but that's who they are. And they have those type of followers. They have that type of engagement. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to be who you are. You can't be anyone else. So if Star Wars and Halloween is your thing, then run with it. And then don't care what anybody else thinks because it's not anybody else's brand. It's not anyone else's Facebook. Only you are posting on there. And if people don't like it, then that's not your people anyways. You know, we always tell you um, quality over quantity. You don't want 50 people to join you if they're nothing like you and you just don't, you, I don't even know, like you just don't get along or whatever. Another thing, I know I'm kind of blowing through this, but I don't want to keep y'all on here all night. <laughs> and we were already like 11 minutes late, so it's fine. So I, I shared this the other night and I don't really care for it. What it was, was it kind of tied my why and what I did and everything together and they call it a manifesto so y'all can google that y'all can get on Pinterest and search manifesto that's just kind of like your motto basically your why your just a crossover of your whole branding and what you do and what you're about so I will read mine and I can always post it somewhere if I need to I just don't like it because it don't relate to me anymore and it was I don't know but um I will read it just so you all can get an idea but um so one thing what do you say to your people often? Like if someone messages you and says, hey girl, what do you say back? Do you say, hey girl, hey love, hey boo? Like how you talk to people is essentially your brand too. I say, hey love to everybody. So that was part of my brand. So like at the top, uh, if it'll zoom in, it says, hey love. Literally when my customers message me, I'm like, hey love, what's up? That's just how I talk to them. So they know that, they expect that. Now, if someone got in my inbox and was like, hey honey, or hey, they would probably be like, who who is this is this Krista like people know how I talk so anyways back to manifesto like I said you can google this or get on Pinterest maybe other people have theirs posted and I'll share it too but um like I said it kind of breaks down who you are um what you do what you're about so mine just says um this was mind you years ago it says, I'm a wifey, six-figure mama to three, Starbucks addict, Target obsessed, boss mom, hustler, health and wealth coach. It's a lot, okay? Health and wealth coach, blogger, and top recruiter with a passion to uplift and empower other moms and women to lead authentic, healthy, and happy lives while living their dreams. Like I said, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot, but um, that was just what I went with and you can shorten it. You can make it as long as you want. This is you, like I said, at the end of the day. Um, and then it says, I love empowering women. And I believe every mom is powerful and can do anything that she sets her mind to. Um, I believe in meetings that feel like coffee dates, friendships that feel like family and leading from the front to show them that I, if I can do it, they can too. Um, I help inspire single moms, busy moms and hustling college students to lose weight get healthy with natural products and start their own business with hands-on leadership to develop the skills, income, and exit strategy to leave their nine to five jobs. Um, I probably just could have shortened that to hashtag bring the mamas home or something. I don't know. Like I said, it, I did the most with it. So keep that in mind. <laughs> um, the next line says, I put the boss in boss mom by teaching you exactly what I did to quit my medical assistant job, retire my husband and be home with our kids full time. Um, and then the last part says, I pour my energy into leading from the front, training and serving my team. I love to stay up late nights and game plan and strategize and provide you with the tools, skills and strategy for time management, um, top notch social media skills like my Instagram strategy that I use to grow my Instagram following to over 12K. I get to live my life and work from my phone. So basically all of that was just telling you what I do, who I want to work with that I'm going to be, you know, this leader that's going to be there work through it all. I'm going to help you with this or that. Like, that's what you do. That's what you sum up into your motto or your, like I said, it's like a crossover between your why and who you are and what you do and who you help. That's what you got to keep in mind. Like I said, if you all will remind me 
after the training. I, I can post this in one of the chats or something so you can have it. Um, but it just kind of lets people know like, and this this is something that you should be doing pretty often too. It's just like a simple post every now and then that says, hey, I have a bunch of new followers. I just wanted to share a little bit about myself. I'm a mom, I like Target. Like just putting yourself out there and letting people know who you are and what you're about. Um, what do you search on Pinterest? I'll type it in the comments real quick. Um, but it was manifesto is what they called it when we did it, I don't, I don't know. And then the other thing was branding board. Um, and you can search different colors like you can search I think it's like you can search blue mood board or something like that any of that should pull up some branding stuff on Pinterest and all that I did was I made a folder that said I made it private I think too and it was just like branding inspo or something so anything that I wanted to integrate into my brand um, you know back then on Instagram we posted like stock photos and stuff like that we don't do that anymore um, but just anything that you want to tie into yourself and who you are. And like I said, it, it kind of just over, I don't want to say complicates, but it like over explains what we already talked about, your branding, your five things, your why, your, it just pulls everything together and it sounds sophisticated, basically. That's why I said I named it that. So everybody would jump on and be like, oh, what's the secret sauce? And like someone said a few minutes ago. The secret sauce is you. At the end of the day, your branding is what you've already done, what you've already shared on social media, what you already do daily. You know, the way that you dress, the way that you talk, the way that you post, the way that you're already doing things is your brand. Lynn's always says this about the branding. I mean, at the end of the day, you can't overcomplicate something to try to be like someone else. Like I said, you can, you could stay up all night, you know, searching M's page or something, or Brittany's page, trying to figure out what you could do and do this and do that. But at the end of the day, if you can't hold that standard, because it's somebody else's standard, you can't hold yourself to Brittany's standard when it comes to how she dresses or like you can't mock someone and then live up to that every day. You can't wake up every morning and be like, oh, well, what's Brittany doing today? Let me be like her that's only going to get you so far and if it's not you then it's not you like I said I don't I picked pink back then because I was trying to keep up with someone else obviously I don't even I don't even know but there's no way I could hold that up I don't even have pink stuff in my house besides probably the girls rooms like <laughs> let me go to the gym like her now I mean when when it comes to you know let me match Britney's efforts let me because you know she stays hustling something like that going to the gym drinking the water of course but at the end of the day you are inspiring if you're showing up and being who you are that's going to inspire your team to do the same thing like do you want people to join your team and then act like you and do everything that you do 24 7 and then let's be real like are you doing all the things if someone joined you right now and they copied your whole page are they going to get somewhere are they going to be successful so all of these things are just something that I wanted you all to think about I wanted to, and I wanted to pour a little bit into you and tell you that you're already doing these things. You're already showing your brand. You're already showing up as who you are, which is what you need to be doing. If you're, if you go to my page and copy all my posts and paste them on your page, it's only going to get you so far. Because then if someone jumps in your inbox and they're like, oh my gosh, I love Target too. And you're like, what are you talking about? Because you took my post that says something about Target and you live obviously in the middle of nowhere with no Target. You know what I mean? Like you have to, it's just like if you don't even watch Grey's Anatomy and then Christina messages you and she's like, oh, did you watch Grey's last night? I don't even know what you're talking about. Because you took somebody else's post and somebody else's life and tried to fit in, but you don't even know what they mean. So I want you all to think about this. At the end of the day, you have to just have enough confidence in yourself to just be unapologetically you. You can't be like anyone else. Of course, we look to the left and we look to the right and we try to do this and try to do that. But how long does that work for you? Is it sustainable? Or do you start struggling and get burnout? Because I can tell you now, if you've come to a point in your business or your life where you half-ass everything, it's because of this. It's because you truly don't know what you like and who you are and how you want to do things. You're trying to do like everybody else. For so long, and I know I've talked about this before too, 
for so long, I thought that I could do all the things that I can cook five meals a day and be a great wife and be a great mom and be a hands-on mom. And then my house be part. Nope. I hired somebody to clean my house this year because let's be real. I'd rather spend time working my business and with my children than cleaning my house. I don't care. And guess what? I had to come to a point where I didn't care to tell people that because the judgment was there before. Like, oh, well, they're going to think I'm less of a woman or less of a wife or less of a mom because she don't clean her house. I don't care what anyone thinks at this point, because when the, and it's my cousin that does it, but she comes over. And for those three to four hours that she's at my house, I can literally sit down and focus on work. And then by the time that I'm done or spending time with my kids, usually my kids are on virtual at that time. But by the time that she's done, I can look around and I feel amazing because my house is clean. I didn't have to worry about it. I'm not keeping up with the Joneses. I'm not stressed because my work isn't done. I didn't waste all day, every day. Cause let's be real. We can clean today and we still got to clean tomorrow. Especially if you're a mom, I clean every day and still got to clean every day. Like it's an, it's a real problem. So if once a week you can afford some for someone to cut and it may not be house cleaning, it can be anything, but if you can afford for once a week, somebody to come in and do something for you, then do it. If you need an assistant to help you put all the Christmas cards that you wrote to your customers in envelopes, address them and send them out, do it. Give them a freaking three-day mini for it. I'm all about delegating these days now, y'all. Like if someone can do it for me, they're doing it for me. But you have to get to that point. I'm getting a nanny. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I need one of those too. But I mean, at the end of the day, and I know this was so irrelevant to what we're talking about. That has nothing to do with branding, but it has to do with, you have to accept yourself and what you're capable of. Am I capable of keeping the house clean and cooking all the meals and doing all the things? Yeah. But do you think my family wants to be around me after I've done all that all day? Nope. They sure don't. And I've, I've, I've accepted that and that's okay. And I don't care to talk about that on social media. That's who I am. And you know what? My inbox blows up all the time. Like, oh my gosh, who cleans your house? Who does this and blah, blah, blah. Like, it's just a new conversation starter. It's just someone else that felt the same way, but never told anyone. And now they feel confident enough to do it. And like I said, this has, is irrelevant, but this is with anything. Maybe I wanted a white Christmas tree this year when everyone was doing their pretty flocked ones, but that made me me. And then some other mom seen she had a white Christmas tree too, so she felt confident enough to post it. It can be any little thing, but you have to brand yourself and be yourself so much that it makes other people want to do the same. It makes other people rise up and be themselves too. Like I said, people, it, it can be so irre irrelevant that I have someone come clean my house once a week but it makes other people realize that they can be themselves on social media too. They can talk about how they yelled at their kids all day because sometimes we just have those days because I'm here for it too. That's the kind of platform that I want. I want one where people know that I am who I am and I'm not going to judge you for who you are. I know all this was just all over the place, but <laughs> does anyone have any questions? <sighs> so I, like I said, I wanted to reel y'all in a little bit with some, um, let me make y'all think I have some secret sauce, but I wanted to pour into you. What if you feel like you're too much for people sometimes? I get that. I really do. I get, you're never going to be too much for your people. I have friends in my life. Like I have people that I've been around and you know, you have to like kind of sit and you don't feel like being yourself. But then I have friends like in my team chat, I will go on there. If I cuss, I cuss. I still love Jesus. Like I know most of our leaders are this way. You have to surround yourself with people that you're not too much for. You just do. If that's not, if that's not what you're surrounding yourself with, if you have to keep yourself in a box, then that's not your people and you don't want them around anyways. And it can come to family too. I don't care who it is. Maybe it's your cousins that are always over, but you feel like you got to restrict yourself into this little box when they're around. Cut them off. At the end of the day, if nobody else pays your bills but you, you don't answer to nobody else but you. Same goes with your social media. Oh, well, my mom doesn't want me to post this stuff. My mom don't want to see it either, but guess what? I don't care. Um, family gets cut off too. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody said something. Hold on. 
you'll find your right people, the ones who unfollow and friends you aren't your people and it leaves room to find the ones who are. Exactly. You have a um, limit on Facebook of how many friends you can have. You don't want it to be the wrong people. So um, it won't scroll any further. I don't know what it's doing. There it goes. So yeah, I hope this was not too all over the place. Um, I really just wanted you all to know that you're already on the right track. You're already doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're already branding yourself. There's nothing complicated about it. And I don't want you to, that's why I only touched on it for a second. I don't want you to go to Pinterest and look up all this stuff and stay up all night and come up with all these colors and all these fonts and this and that, and then not implement and then not get on social media or, and then get on social media and only be perfect. Like I know our, our team has been focusing on branding and stuff, but they know that, that the visual part is only a part. It's only a part of who you are. So I want you all to think about all that. I want you all, if you remind me in one of the groups, I will send those things, um, the branding board, manifesto, whatever. And then I can send y'all some ideas too. But um, I just really wanted you all to take um, that you are who you are and you can only show up as who you are every day. Um, I hope you all rock out this holiday season. Like I said, finish rocking out these last two days of the credits. Um, get your people in the system. It's giving season, like I said, put it that way. I mean, there's no ulterior motives for us. Either people order or they don't, but you wanna help as many people get it, those accounts and those credits as you can. Um, so yeah, I hope everyone has a very Merry Christmas um, and I will talk to you all soon, I guess.